If you're thinking about getting into self-hosting, you don't need this. The blinking lights, the wires, the rack, they look cool, but they're not going to help you learn self-hosting any faster. This is my current setup after about two years of being into self-hosting. In this video, I wanna talk about getting started in self-hosting and some of the hardware that you might use to do that. Now, this is not meant to be a be-all, end-all list. This is just some ideas that I've put together on what I think would be helpful to make the idea of getting into self-hosting a bit more accessible to more people. First, you're going to need an internet connection and some way to get the internet into your house. Now, this is a TP-Link Archer AX21 internet router, and you may have something similar to this, or you may just have the modem that your ISP provided when you signed up for your service. Or you may have some combination of two similar devices, both a modem that your ISP provided, as well as a uh, internet router that you have added to this for additional functionality, or whatever reason you may have to add the additional router. Either way, think of this as the method we're going to use to get the internet to all of your different devices in your home. Depending on the number of wired devices that you have and need to plug in to get internet to them, you may eventually run out of ethernet ports on your modem or router, and you may need to consider getting a network switch. Now this is an eight port switch that will give you seven additional ethernet ports to plug additional devices into. Now, of course, the reason that you're getting seven additional ports and not eight is that you're going to have to sacrifice one of those to plug into your router so that you can get data from your router to the rest of the devices via that eight port switch. Now that kind of covers the very basics as far as the networking side of things is concerned with regards to an internet modem that your ISP will provide and or a router that you'll attach to that to give yourself additional ports or additional features or whatever the case may be. Now, we also want to consider that your, your ISP's modem and or the router that you've got will also provide wireless connectivity to different devices if that's an option for you. So now that we've kind of got some clarification on that, let's talk about the types of hardware that you might use to actually host your self-hosted applications. Now, there are a lot of different options out there, but I wanna kind of break it down into a couple of different categories. First, you've got low powered single board devices like Raspberry Pis. Next, you're going to have other more powerful devices that will typically run on some sort of a desktop style processor, an Intel processor, an AMD processor. Uh, and those include uh, not just desktop, but also the server grade versions of those processors. So you're gonna have the low end ARM style uh, processors as well as the desktop style processors. We're just gonna keep it simple in those two categories here. So first, you're going to have the ARM-based devices like the Raspberry Pis. They are super small devices, barely bigger than a deck of playing cards. They sit power at around 15 watts, and they can run all sorts of different applications. Now, I've done dozens of videos about self-hosting applications on Raspberry Pis, and I will put a playlist in the description down below if you want to check that out. Now, even though Raspberry Pi style devices are small and they just barely sip any power while they're doing their job, there are definitely some downsides to using an ARM-based platform like this. And let's talk a little bit about that. The Raspberry Pi 4 is powered by a quad-core Cortex-A72 processor that's only clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So not only are you not getting very many cores, but they're also going to be low powered cores, which may cause issues with performing certain tasks or being compatible with certain types of setups, whether it's Docker or Kubernetes or whatever the case may be. So kind of getting a bit more in depth as far as the Docker, the Kubernetes Rancher, all of those different platforms that you may use for your self-hosting, oftentimes developers only um, compile their, uh, their applications, their containers, whatever, to work on an x86 platform. So if you run into a situation like that, you've got a couple of options. The first one being just skip that container, that application, that, that setup, or you can learn to compile the applications for yourself to work with uh, the ARM platform and hope that everything works correctly. Now, just a quick side note here with regards to that, the folks over at linuxserver.io usually do a very, very good job of making sure that their containers for Docker uh, are compatible with both ARM and x86 platforms. So uh, if you wanted to kind of get your feet wet and you're not sure which way you want to go, uh, linuxserver.io does a great job of making sure that you can kind of use their stuff out of the gate with any of the available platforms. Another thing to consider is that when you're dealing with Raspberry Pis, there's no way to upgrade the CPU or the memory on those devices. They are built as they are, and that's what you get. There's no upgrade path when you're dealing with a Raspberry Pi device. 
Also, when the Pi 4 8 gigabyte board was released in 2020, it only cost about $75. And looking at today's market, you're looking at more than $200 for the same device, and you still have to buy the power supply and all of your storage and all of that separately. So given the limitations of a Raspberry Pi 4, especially at today's prices, it's hard for me to recommend that somebody go out and purchase a Raspberry Pi 4 for the sake of getting into self-hosting. And that is especially true when we take a look at what I picked up over the weekend from Amazon. This is an HP Elite Desk 800G1. It has an Intel i5 4590 quad core processor that boosts up to 3.7 gigahertz. Now mine came with 16 gigs of RAM, but it is upgradable to 32 gigs of DDR3. The model I got also came with a 256 gig SSD for your operating system or booting, as well as a one terabyte hard drive for storage. Now the SSD and the hard drive might be off brand or old as they are in this case, but you can pick up a new silicon powered 256 gig SSD for your OS or boot and a one terabyte SSD for storage for $16.99 and $48.99 respectively, and still come out about the same price as what you would pay for a Raspberry Pi 4. So I guess I should back up just a little bit and uh, kind of let you know that I only paid $139.99 for my HP Elite Desk 800G1. So with that said, going with something even like this 800G1 still has its lists of pros and cons. So let's talk about the cons first. While the Elite Desk 800G1 is still classified as a small form factor PC, it is still larger than your modem, router, switch, and Raspberry Pi combined. It has the potential to use up to 240 watts, which is about 16 times what you would use with a Raspberry Pi sipping 15 watts. Also, depending on which upcycled or, or renewed device you get, um, that device may run considerably louder than a Raspberry Pi, which is effectively silent. However, I got really, really lucky with my purchase here. So this is our uh, HP device here, right there is our little HP logo. Uh, you can see that we are currently turned off. Here's a little silence so you can get an idea of what the room sounds like without it turned on. Now we'll turn this on. I honestly am shocked at how quiet that is. Uh, well done on Cooler Master for making that fan and this setup that quiet. So now let's talk about some of the pros of going with an upcycled solution like I bought over the weekend from Amazon. So because this is an x86 platform, across the board, you're just going to get better compatibility, whether it's operating systems, containers, applications, whatever the case is, chances are you're going to have better luck with compatibility with an x86 platform. You'll have even better expandability because this device actually has multiple PCIe slots. It has two empty RAM slots. So again, I can upgrade from the 16 gigs that it came with up to 32 gigs of RAM for whatever my application needs may be. This device also has four SATA ports for storage. Now I will say that uh, three of mine were taken up, uh, two for hard drives and one for a CD DVD ROM drive. But uh, if you wanted to unplug that, that, that CD DVD drive, you could actually have uh, two available SATA ports for even more storage expandability. And of course, upcycling old usable hardware like this keeps e-waste out of landfills, dumps, and recycling centers. Now, there are other x86 small form factor devices out there, like these mini PCs, and of course, a plethora of others that you can buy for a couple hundred dollars as well. The problem with setups like this, uh, while yes, they are low powered and they will probably do the job for you, um, They've often got low powered Celeron processors. Uh, they've often got soldered RAM. Uh, they're often single board computers and a fancy case that give you no path for upgradability in the future. And with no path to upgradability, eventually this will also become e-waste uh, that will end up in a recycling center or a landfill or a dump or whatever the case may be. Also, the kind of downside to going with these mini PCs like I just showed is that very often you will pay as much, if not more, for one of these devices than you would for a renewed or, or upcycled uh, small form factor PC like this Elite Desk 800G1. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, this video was never intended to be a be all end all list for getting started with self-hosting. I just wanted to put together some ideas on how somebody might be able to get into self-hosting with an upgrade path on a budget. I'll try to have as many links in the description down below where you can go check out uh, hardware like what I showed here or any of the other variations of the, this uh, upcycled, refurbished, renewed uh, hardware that's available on Amazon or eBay or wherever so that you can uh, not only get into a new hobby, but also help eliminate some e-waste from, uh, from the environment. 
So let me know in the comment section down below, or even with a simple thumbs up, if this is a, a video topic that you're interested in, I'd be happy to make uh, additional videos as far as how to get started in self-hosting. Um, of course, I've been doing this a couple of years. I'm by no means a, a master, a pro or whatever. I'm still learning new things all of the time. And I hope that these kind of videos help you guys do the same. But with that said, I wanna go ahead and wrap this up. I wanna thank you guys for spending a few minutes of your day with me today, and I will talk to you in the next video.